Now, number nine, we have uh, 198 Hanover Street. Karen Johnson of Charter Realty is here, along with some colleagues. Good evening. Uh, so my name is Tara Johnson. I'm with Charter Realty and Development. And if you just give uh, uh, Jeff a couple minutes to set up all my presentation boards for you. We have handouts for the council members, which I will start with here. Sure. So, good evening. Uh, first off, I want to thank the council members for making some time for us this evening. Obviously, you have a lot of very important matters on your agenda uh, tonight that are of very uh, strong interest to the residents of the North End. Um, I am with Charter Realty and Development, and we own. Uh, 1670 Cross Street. We purchased it in the fall of 2013. The property uh, is currently uh, where Citizens Bank is located and where formerly <coughs> Bread and Butter was located. And as you uh, may have guessed, it's a fairly prominent location. And we are proposing a redevelopment of that block which extends from Salem Street along Cross Street to Hanover Street. The address is of 198 Hanover is the official address for the property. Um, we wanted to come come before both uh, the North End Waterfront Council as well as the Residents Association because we think there's a lot of interest in what we're proposing. Um, I wanted I want to just be very clear that we're here more on an informational basis. Um, this project that we're proposing. Is, yeah, why don't we? We do not. Yes. So this stage, is just information. Sure, sure. It's informational. The stage where we are right now is we've met with the VRA, we've met with the ISD, and these are the plans that we'll be submitting to them next week. Um, we are not seeking, which is why we're here on more of an informational basis. We are not seeking any zoning relief from zoning board of appeals. If we were, then that would require an automatic referral over to you, obviously. Well aware of the process. What we are proposing to do is to remove the existing commercial building um, and the three residences that are located here for sale and replace it with a new building. And our architect is here in a moment. He'll explain to you exactly what uh, the building is to look like. But we're here um, primarily because of the visibility of the location fact that it really is a, um, a location that connects to the north end and the region. And as part of the Greenway Overlay District, one of the objectives is to really uh, activate that pedestrian spot. And so our proposal is historically the, the uses uh, that are currently in there have not been very successful. Just the corner of bread and butter changed to four or five different businesses. So that's over a very short period of time, over an eight year period. Our objective here is coming up with a very unique design, which is much more marketable than what's been there uh, today. Um, when we're talking about new construction in the ocean, we understand there are a lot of issues. We understand there are a lot of issues with respect to the terms of height and density. And so we've been very careful, we think, in designing this proposal to be a new ground level structure. Although it is in the north end, as I mentioned, it's part of the Greenway Overlay District. All of the uses that we're proposing um, at this time are zoning compliant. We don't 
is needing to seek a new variance for this project because our, for example, FAR allows three um, under the dimensional requirements of the North End District. A 3.0, this is a 1.4, the maximum height that's allowed uh, within the North End Zoning District. Dimensional requirements of the North End Zoning. Maximum height allowed is 55 feet, and we're proposing around 35 feet with some changes in the levels. Um, so we mostly wanted to share the information with you. At some point in the future, there will most likely be some issues with common VIP licenses, other licensing board issues. And in following some of the concerns of this group over time, um, for example, Pete, and I think it was you who was concerned about why is it under construction? Why are you coming to us for the first time just to present the concrete? So um, we wanted to come to you beforehand, explain the project, let you know where we are in the process. Um, so as a segue to schedule, as I mentioned, we will be submitting to the BRA. This is a design component small project review. So essentially it's an administrative staff level review internally. We have consulted with representatives of ISD and what's comfortable that this is a zoning compliant project. Um, there are no less than five different zoning designations that apply to this property. So uh, there was some confusion about exactly what does apply, so we met with them um, and we're, we resolved any outstanding questions. So at this point, I'd like to just hand it over to, um, to Eric Brown from PCA who will walk you through the design of the project. You have the handouts, remember, and you have the Hi, everyone. Eric. Eric Brown. I got out of my car and I noticed that I lost the button in my blazer. Is there a good uh, <laughs> tailor in this thing? So, everyone I think is probably familiar with the site. Um, this red block here shows the building. We have the greenway in front of us, Cross Street here, and Hanover Street and Salem Street. So, the views from the corner over towards the Hanover Street side and looking down, looking up Salem Street. This is looking across from Salem Street towards Hanover. Uh, and this is looking down Hanover Street. So it's kind of a, a mishmash. It's not very, you know, it's not very significant. We don't feel at this point in time. As Karen said, we're only building a, a one and a half story building. We're allowed to build 55 feet. We're much lower. And the density of 3.0, we're going to be much lower. So it's really not a very dense building. Uh, in terms of what's allowed to be done. So these are some, these are some images of, of, of the North End and the Greenway that we kind of use as inspiration for our project. Um, you know, even though when most of the buildings in the North End are four or five stories, uh, our building is only a story and a half, but at the ground level, it's always this kind of post and beam transparent uh, feeling, okay, where the restaurants typically are, the residences above. But you can see it's just kind of nice window configurations and kind of a human scale, nice texture. And then the Greenway is also an important inspiration for our project because it's modern, it's open, it's clean, it's very kind of welcoming to the pedestrians in the neighborhood. So our building is really a transition, as Karen said, from the Greenway into the North End. So our design is, as I said, a story and a half. And it's kind of a simple modern building which is basically metal and wood and a little bit of masonry at the base and glass. So it's kind of very welcoming. We, we hope to see, oh, by the way, these are just made up tenant names. There's no tenants yet for this building. It's kind of made up just for scale and texture, okay? 
But we hope to have, you know, dining on the outside and develop this patio at some point. Uh, but again, it's just kind of a modern building that has the same kind of feel and texture as uh, walking up Stanley Street. We only have a couple more minutes for the presentation. Okay. I'll go quick. So this is from the Salem Street side. You can see this corner. Basically, the building is very simple. It doesn't do a lot. It's just kind of one simple move. So here's kind of a, an overall aerial view. You can see how the building behind us is a bunch of taller. Kind of line with this building along here. So we kind of step down towards the park. And the night pool. Kind of be a transparent building that would draw people in. Okay, thank you. Um, I mean, I hear a lot maybe loud in the division. Don't be patient, but. We as a council would appreciate what the communication line of feedback, especially if it looks like uh, we're going to be working with people with keys and uh, businesses that are you know, not local ones to uh, like the facility. But I'll open up the door to the So, these four food Right now, we just have the four Right now, we're just really showing the tenant spaces as placeholders. So, we have a fairly long schedule and we have not identified it. What do you anticipate on that? Uh, as I said, we haven't identified tenants, but, but consistent with the objectives of the Greenway is after they need to come and providing that connection to the Greenway. So obviously, there will be a significant amount of restaurant interest in the club not identified. We would want to do that. As you guys go along, process since you're going to be applying and you're going to receive a probably a denial letter or approval letter. Is there an opportunity for you guys to come over with more concrete uh, plans and once the city has well, made a decision on the subject? Yeah, these things are very well advanced in terms of, of the design and so this will be the set that's submitted to the BRA uh, within the next week. And so I think our next step in front of this group will be when we've identified tenants. Okay. Uh, well, <coughs> from, from our experience, you know, uh, we, we, just, just looking at the design, you have two stories, you have one story, story and a half, whatever it is, there may be some, uh, uh, you know, changes, they are, they are, I mean, it's not the same building, it's not the same one-story building. Uh, you know, I think that along the process, uh, we have a difference between Faith Exodus and the goals, uh, how you go along and what changes the BRA has made uh, and keep the conversation. Uh, I mean, it's a very important uh, section of the North End to us. It is a gateway to our neighborhood and we'd like to be involved. Uh, I don't think the council is going to vote to uh, vote today. Uh, you know, we have to vote votes on things that have had approval or denial on it or that type of thing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, as you say, it's a very important uh, area of the North End. The existing uh, uh, building there has not done any justice uh, to our community and it's been misused and uh, having empty businesses on, on the main drag that is actually the, the edge of our neighborhood is going to be. So uh, we would like to remain involved. We would like you guys to continue to communicate with our president as things progress uh, so we can help you and we can help us uh, make sense of the whole thing. I just had two questions. Are you going to notify the abundance of the matter? I'm personally meeting. I am um, personally meeting with all the abundance. I've reached out to all of them in some cases and met with representatives today. So, yes. Uh, Maria, Maria, we're going to have a abundance meeting for those folks through the city also? Well, so it's zoning compliant, but as soon as tenants apply to be in, we'll have abundance meetings for every single pot. Spaces 
in one story with a mirror. So the upper level will only be accessed from that Sure, as I this gentleman's question, um, the the uses that are allowed and encouraged in the Greenway or the Lake District use the restaurant space, retail uses, etc. That is our focus. You can't tell us any more specific We don't have any more specific <coughs> information. Um, clearly, uh, I think it's it's in our best interest to have our have our tenants secured before we are public with it. And sure, and as as Maria mentioned, any of the processes that would be required through the licensing board would require some Was the billboard uh, deleted then from the new proposal? Once that billboard goes down, it is not going back up again. So yes, the billboard will be removed. I apologize. I mentioned that. I thought that might be something that people were very excited about. So yes. They also agreed that it was um, the three residential units that we're now losing. Three residential units located at 53 Salem. Um, they are very small studio apartment units. Um, 53 Salem originally was constructed separate from 16 to 70 Cross Street. The structure for 53, if you whoever went into the bread and butter, you know there were several brick arches, which from a, a, a floor to ceiling height perspective, uh, as well as just a space utilization perspective, severely limit the ability to use that commercial space. So we spent a tremendous amount of time analyzing it, a lot of time with structural engineers to figure out if we could keep it and still utilize what's underneath. And unfortunately, we came to the conclusion that we will not How big is the It really is going to be tenant driven. The entire project for ground floor, just to give you a little bit of context, is 5,500. So that's the entire footprint of the building. Are you going to take into consideration the local businesses for you? I think that's an excellent point, and I know it's a point that's that's of concern to the plan. And obviously, when you look at a, at a project like this, you have to look also at the orientation. So it's it's somewhat part of the north end, and somewhat part of the greenway. Um, we are we are we are considering from an Because we value what we have, we built it ourselves. 
he wasn't uh, an absolute neighborhood 30 years ago. And uh, we've uh, all of us have put our time in here and we built our businesses and, and maintain our properties and preserve our school. And we would hate to have it uh, continually uh, be eroded by the new developers. So, you know, we'd like, to, we'd, like, we'd like you to keep that in mind and keep it in consideration and not do what others have done in the past. And when you put the project forward, it should be announced. You know, if you're going to interview for the tenants, it should be public, you know, it should be public notice that we got to interview for tenants. Uh, we don't want to have something other than what we're trying to do here to uh, be clouded by some people who listen. Okay. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes left, but I'm all set to the green rate and the food trucks. I'm very selective in that way, supplement, not supplant the businesses. So that, even for the timing of the food trucks. But does anyone else in the country? Yeah. As far as the design goes, yeah. 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 as far as the design goes, I want to change it. I want to change it. Yeah. Yeah. This seems to be more towards the green man to go in to comment on that. Also suggesting that it might be suggesting that it might be anticipated for a more corporate business for that business We are here to get the certainly kind of map with the designers in the DRA and so we come about it and look different stages. So I think what you're what you're seeing is an attempt to make this property significantly more What's been done there has been a little bit different. We have nothing to do with the North anymore. That's one of the reasons why the establishments have not been successful. The bread and butter bakery did not have anything to do with an entire bakery. The nail salon has nothing to do with the entire business. The juicery has nothing to do with 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 not local businesses. Okay, so we have one thing, it's, it's a big attraction, and we have, to, we have to done the work to attract tourists and folks to come down, and if you pick up down by what we're selling, it might be a good idea to look into that and keep that in mind. Nothing has worked yet, but nothing has been uh, not that good. Thank you. Council, really quickly before we uh, open up. Uh, and Deaf Line, please raise your hand. We were very disappointed in the original design. A little louder, yeah. A little louder. Yeah. This was not promised to be designed to be now. They yeah. went loud and clear. They wanted something okay. to the whole world, well, something that will go into the character of the neighborhood. This is not a weapon. And do you mind if we just stand the interior a little bit better? Thank you. I'm sorry. Louder. 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 We want something that will blend in the old world character of the notch and uh, maybe outdoor seating, but it does not blend in. Anymore. And it looks good on paper, but in person it's not going to look good.
the fact that uh, you know we're painting the design so that we can go in front, we can get past them, no instruction, and I'm gonna say, I mean we gotta protect what's left of this neighborhood. Right? No offense again. I'm not with the neighborhood's about. I got no no problems with it being built there, but we need to keep what that looks like in the left. So, unless, uh, unless there's a few other businesses in the area, a lot of us here tonight, I just please be mindful of the local businesses. Uh, the design doesn't really blend in. Okay. Yeah, one more thing. I just wanted to add that you say you want to work into the neighborhoods. I don't see the, the five and the one story businesses there. What's the likelihood when you get into it, or six story, or six story, when you get into it, to change your mind, now we're making it 12 units instead of six or eight instead of 10. I think that's what we're looking at. This is the market which is double when the necessary, the cost effectiveness, the effectiveness of the project doesn't come through, you're going to have to increase your occupancy to make the payments. But can you get sure that you're not going to know? No. Right now you told the board we have no idea how many people you're going to get in but you're going to be permitting it. So you have to have an idea of what's going in. Now, if that doesn't become cost effective, you would attempt to double that or triple use of the space instead of four units, make it six, make it two stories yeah. instead of a story and a half. That's what we're concerned about besides the structure. I'm sure you're aware that um, currently under zoning, it's more likely that it will be less than that because of, of the depth of the spaces. That's a, it's a huge challenge on this property. Um, and one that we have struggled with, and frankly, I think a lot of people have struggled with. Um, the area, is not adding the area. This is the amount of area that we're coming we're, we're, right. The, the footprint of the building isn't going to change because the parcel size is essentially the see how deep this room is. I've been in bed and breakfast with bed breakfast. I've been in the nails a lot. It's pretty deep. And this would be cost effective for you. You're not going to be able to get away with free businesses in there unless they're giant businesses and who knows what they're going to be. And if you're permitting it, you're permitting it, stop it. If you're permitting it, you have an idea who you're putting in there because you have to run the gas lines, the fence, and everything. So we, we may need to know. We need to know who you're trying to do. Who you're trying to do. There is not a second story on, on what we're going to do. I just want to be very clear about that. It is a one story building with a mezzanine. So any access to that mezzanine level is only from that individual tenant space. So I, part of the reason that we're here is clearly to give feedback um, and understand what the concerns are. If I have this a couple of minutes, I just want to talk we're, we're to you. Really we're going to talk to you. But uh, we appreciate it coming. And Thank I think you. It's, we've heard the feedback. So I just keep in touch because obviously once you submit the plans, we can talk about this all night. Until they're submitted and we know a little better idea, we don't have any. <laughs> We are worried about the DRA making the decision for us. Okay, we have a bad habit of making decision for us. We don't like it, and we don't like uh, as in right uh, a this of this magnitude. Well, you know, well, we don't have a neighbor involved. We don't have somebody locally involved that's coming over to actually change the fabric of our community. Okay, so that that those are our concerns. So what we're told, it's as in right. 
it's worrisome because anything can go there. When we talk that the PRA is going to deal directly in private meetings, we don't like that either. So in a sense, you know, you're becoming a member of a community, you know, we like you to be as crystal clear as possible. That, as that, that as is possible. exactly why we, we are here early. So thank you very much. For